Hey everyone, welcome back to the next installment in the How to Be a Poser Beginner series. In this short video, we're going to illustrate a few techniques that you can use to help your figure hit a basic character specific museum pose. Let's get started. Okay, now that we've verified that the figure has made it to us intact and we have a good idea of what its limitations are, the time has come for us to get started with a basic pose. Now, what most people refer to this as is an out of box pose. Personally, I don't like to refer to that, but I don't consider this to be a pose. This is just how the figure found its way into the box. There's been no posing involved. This is just what it looks like. So what we want to do at this point is to use all those points of articulation, use all that range of motion, use, as, use whatever accessories that we need over here to give the figure life, give it, a, give it a little bit more pizzazz and make it look more impressive on a shelf or in a case or however you decide to display it. Again, this is the figure straight out of the box. Nothing has really been done to it. So the first thing we may need to do in, and definitely so in the case of this figure, is to start dressing the figure. Obviously the figure comes dressed in his costume, but there are certain accoutrements that need to be added to the figure before we can proceed. In the case of Deadpool, his ever-present katanas. So we will want to drop one of those each down onto their respective homes here at the back of his harness. And I missed the mark on that. You can see they have these little metal clasps some of them will be tighter than others, and I think that in this case we can just proceed with just kind of applying a little bit of pressure here. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> so if that happens, if you find out that you don't have the leeway that you need, you may need to apply something as simple as just bending it out just a touch so that you get that clearance between the katana and the harness. And then once you Got it, you can slide it home just like that. Boom, he's armed up. Now you can see that in doing that, I knocked one of the pouches loose, so just go ahead and fix that. Now, in some figures, and this one is no exception to this rule, certain parts of the costume as you're posing the figure are going to be knocked askew. That's to be expected. Those little things, like in this case, these pouches, that's the fine tuning that you'll do after you've struck a pose. Now, which pose are we going to strike? It's what's called a museum pose. It's essentially a basic standing pose, and it's the pose that actually has the benefit of taking up the least amount of shelf space. The museum pose is the kind of pose that basically provides you with the smallest footprint. That is to say, it takes up the least amount of diameter around the figure itself, the smallest radius around the figure itself. What we're going to do is basically get these feet about shoulder width apart and I'm going to take this gun and put it in this hand and slap that little strap back there. Some people like to leave their straps up. I just think it looks a lot cleaner if you just seal the gun strap back to where it's supposed to be even after the gun's been taken out of the holster. All right, so I'm gonna move this gun up right here. One of the things that I like to call people's attention to is the lines that you create when you're posing a figure. And two of those lines that get created are basically the angle of, by the angle of the gun. There's a line that goes through that gun, there's a line that goes through that arm. And I don't like for those lines to connect, so I'm gonna move that gun aside a little bit. And what you can see is that it creates like a little triangle here. I've noticed in, like, artists kind of create triangles all the time in the way that they do their work, especially like comic book artists and such. You might think that that's done, and for some people that might be good enough. And if that's good enough for you, then by all means leave it. But I think that we can probably do a little bit better than that. This looks to be the closest hand that we, were, that we are going to have to having a relaxed grip. But this is Deadpool. So he, I'm gonna just provide him a, with a little bit more character by adding another hand to the equation. You can see that he comes with quite a few. All of these right hands are gonna be immediately removed from consideration. So we've got this guy right here. That's got a little bit of character, okay. Okay, now we can see here that the hand I've selected does not have a wrist peg in it. Um, that's because this figure came with the wrist pegs for all the hands unassembled, which suits our purposes just fine. It's a perfect opportunity to demonstrate how to put one of them in. Uh, this is a wrist peg without a, without a hand on it. 
not plugged into the wrist of the body itself. You can see that it has a single point of articulation right here and it's ratcheted. So you can swivel it back and forth. There are two pegs on this peg, collectively referred to as a peg. The smaller one is the one that you would insert into the little, little tiny hole there in the hand. This is a nicely soft plastic. The pegs should slide into it quite easily and it does. There we go. We got it home. It's in there nice and secure, not going anywhere. And you can see that this is the part that's going to slide into the, into the arm itself. And then you can swivel it back and forth. Once you get it in, you can twist it in the wrist itself. Let's just assume that this, my fingers serve as the arm. You can twist it on either one of the two pegs to get it at whatever angle you wish for it to be. Let's see. Yeah, I want to pull that out of there because I want this, I want this wrist to be moving in this direction laterally, I guess the word would be. So I'm going to rotate that peg so that I can do that before I insert it into the arm. So get it in there and then you can twist it up. And then you're just kind of doing this weird gesture. Okay, now you'll notice when I brought that up, one of the things that happened was that these two arms wound up being at the same level. I don't think that's attractive. I think that if you're going to have a hand implemented like this, then you're going to want to do one of two things. You're going to want to either drop the gun down, but that's Deadpool. That's just no fun. So you want the gun up. So in this case, I'm going to just raise that arm up even more from the shoulder and then cock the gun back. I'm posing multiple joints at the same time because I've been doing this for years and I can, I can do that kind of thing. But what I've done here is I've just kind of tilted this wrist back towards his head, brought this arm up as much as I can, and then raised this shoulder joint. So three joints applied right there. I'm going to move this arm and then I'm going to turn his head. Now see what happens here when you tilt this head like this. Deadpool looks a little bit confused, so that's not attractive. So we're going to move that head back. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and start posing the torso a little bit here too. In fact, let's just add a little bit more character by dropping on this other head. And then you've got that more expressive portrait on there. I'm going to move this arm out just a touch, just extend it out, like raise it up just a little bit to the side. And ultimately, I just kind of want to have the hand kind of moving. It's almost like he's pointing at the gun, but what he's really doing is just kind of just giving a backwards peace sign. Now, that's taken care of. So the next step, I've got the torso just kind of tilted this way a little bit, like he's leaning into the, the viewer. Now I want to move this. I'm going to rotate these feet. I want this foot to be, again, pointed more towards the viewer. It just kind of leads you into the figure. This foot is going to be pointed slightly less towards the viewer, just almost not quite a 45 degrees to each other. You see that angle there? Fortunately, somehow or another, must have happened while I was actually posing the torso itself. The hips did exactly what I wanted them to do, which you can see the, how the hips move like this. I wanted those hips cocked over in this direction. Okay, now I'm going to use this opportunity here to showcase something that could go wrong. You have to be careful when you're selecting where you grab the figure. Because if your fingers, if you use, if you put pressure on certain areas of the figure of the costume itself, in this case the harness, then you can pop things loose. Fortunately, this figure was designed in such a way that you can just plug it back in. There's a little bit of a latch there and bam, no harm done. Again, just a little bit of a twist in the hand. See how this line from the gun leads straight up to Deadpool's face? Uh, similarly, I want this arm not to be flat to the camera. And I'm just going to have him not quite sticking his chest out. Yeah, that's a really tight torso. So that is a pretty solid introductory Deadpool pose. Provides a little bit of performance to the figure in a way that harkens to the character itself and the way the character performs in the panels of a comic book. Uh, the very last thing that you're going to want to do is just kind of rotate the figure and I'm just going to move it. I'm going to put him on the stand for this part because what I want to do next is just kind of, I don't want to run the risk of the figure falling over and having to reset the pose, but at the same time I want to just rotate the figure and look at all the aspects of the costume. For instance, look at how the swords are kind of hanging at an angle there. 
I want to straighten that out just a little bit. So let's mess with the harness until everything gets leveled. Make sure that those swords are nice and even. Then let's, let's look at these pouches. You don't want those things just kind of sitting at angles. So straighten each one of those out. Make it nice and even at 90 degree angles to the belt itself. Just gonna slide those over just a touch. Let's put that right there. Okay, good. Round to the ones in the front. And see how you just get those things nice and even. Let's move these guys up. I think that's kind of how they came in the box, so let's kind of keep them that way. And one more tweak of the hips. Okay, I just noticed that this there's an unsightly separation here between the head and the costume. So I'm going to try to hide that a little bit by moving that closer in, using the top joint and the middle joint. Spin it around, make sure it still looks good, mostly, yeah. Just kind of tilt it on the top joint. And again, that's a good starter pose. Very basic, doesn't take a whole lot of room. It's nicely centered on the figure stand. Now, one of the things that you're gonna find out as you have one of these figures is that it can take you legitimately days before you actually perfect that pose. If I were to take the time for it and set this up on my own shelf, every time I walked by, I guarantee that I would be taking another look at it tweaking the head a little bit, tweaking the arm a little bit, that's fine. It doesn't mean you're a terrible poser. It just means that you're a perfectionist. Okay, and now for those of you who are more interested in displaying your figures without a stand, um, we'll be covering that issue, the issue is of balance in a more advanced poser type video uh, that'll be forthcoming. Uh, stay tuned for that. But other than that, I recommend that everybody start, if this is your first figure, I recommend that you start with the stand until you've perfected those techniques. And that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Hey, did you like that video? Be sure to subscribe by clicking the S icon on your screen and click that bell icon to be notified whenever a new video is posted. If you'd like more info on the items featured in this video, click the link provided under product info. Thanks for watching and don't forget to let your geek side show.